Hey guys, Rob from Produce Tech here, and in this tutorial, I'm going to run you through the Ableton Live template, updated for Machina version 2, which allows you to turn your Machina hardware into a control surface for live. With the huge amount of controls on studio, as well as the big displays, jog wheel, and buttons above, navigating, performing, and even editing of your set can be done really quickly and easily. Let's check it out. First thing to do when setting up is to copy the template support files for Ableton Live 9 from the controller editor folder, which on a Mac lives in Applications, Native Instruments, Controller Editor, Template Support Files, and Ableton Live 9. On a PC, it's identical but starts with the Programs folder on your hard drive. Then you just select the folder or folders relating to your hardware. I'll choose them all, and then copy them by selecting Copy in the Edit menu, or using the keyboard shortcut, or by control clicking, right clicking on a PC, and choosing Copy from the pop up menu. Then you need to paste these in Live's MIDI Remote Scripts folder. On a Mac, you have to show Live's package contents, then go to Contents, App Resources, MIDI Remote Scripts. Then again with that folder selected, I can paste in those folders using the Edit Menu command or pop-up menu once again. On a PC, you can find the folder in the following location on your hard drive. Program Data, Ableton, Live 9, Resources, MIDI Remote Scripts. If any Machina folders are in there already, you can just delete them or overwrite them with the new ones. Next thing to do is to load the Ableton Live template, which you can do with the controller editor. So just boot it up, then in the templates section, if you're not seeing live there, just click factory templates and choose it from the list. This then places it in the list above, after which it can be selected there or from the hardware to activate that template. Now live can be booted up, and then in the MIDI preferences, you just choose your machine or hardware as the control surface, followed by the virtual input for the input and output port. And you're ready to go. Now if you hold down shift, you'll see the template name on the left display. And the page up and down buttons alongside will then switch the hardware to any other templates you had in the list in the controller editor. In this case, just the blank MIDI CC template. So I've got a set here with some nice loops from Audio Jack's Loop Masters sample pack loaded in. So let's start by looking at what the pads can do. The mode the pads are in is controlled by the buttons alongside, just like with Machina, with the top three setting them to more permanent modes. For instance, the pattern button switches them to clip mode, after which we get a 4x4 section of the grid across the pads, which then behaves exactly like Live's grid, allowing any clips to be launched, stopped, and so on. on Shifting around the grid can be done in a number of ways, such as using the blue group buttons to step up and down and left and right. Banking in groups of four is also possible by hitting the group A switch, which turns the switches purple. With the edit function selected, you can also use the jog wheel to navigate the grid, where pressing and holding whilst rotating switches from horizontal to vertical motion. To launch rows of clips or scenes, you press the scene button, after which pad 1 relates to scene 1, pad 2, scene 2, and so on. And you can see in both modes, the pad's LEDs provide you with a good visual representation of what's happening in the set, and even allow you to change the colour of clips which is done by holding Browse, which is Studio's Shift button in the template, and then hitting the Pattern button, after which you can select a clip and then choose a colour from the palette. Pressing Pattern once more, then switches back to normal clip launching mode. Tracks can also be muted and soloed from the pads, which is done by holding down the Mute or Solo buttons and then hitting the pads relating to each track. Similarly, tracks can be selected with the Select button, and the group D and H switches allow you to record arm tracks or stop clips on a track. Clips can also be stopped using the buttons above the display on page one of the template. The page up and down buttons step through the 10 pages for encoders and buttons, which change their action as shown on the displays. So on page one, we have stop buttons for the four selected tracks below as well as control of the track's faders with the encoders. Whilst the right-hand display record arms those tracks and adjusts panning. For extended mixer control, you can switch to pages 2, 3 or 4, which give you two parameters on eight selected tracks. With page 2 on track arming and volume, page 3 on panning and mute buttons, and page 4 on sends and solos. 
In this mode, the auto button toggles through sends. The last main pad performance mode allows you to play MIDI instruments, which is done when the pad mode button is active. Now the pads become MIDI notes, with the pads set either chromatically, to every semitone, or to a particular scale if you prefer. If I record arm track 5 now, which has a synth on it, then you can hear the pads play the synth. There are a few ways of changing the pads notes. One is to select page 8 above, after which the last three encoders change the octave, bass note, and scale. And the pads can also be set to one of two colour modes, where one has colours for different notes, and one for intervals, which makes it easier for you to quickly find a particular MIDI note value, or identify an interval. And the other way of setting MIDI notes in this mode is to use the jog wheel in its edit function again, where rotating normally sets the octave, pushing and rotating the scale, and holding browse and rotating the bass note. For example, if I wanted to set the pads to a pentatonic scale in A, I could transpose the bass note to A, making it blue, then find the pentatonic scale, which has identical note values running diagonally, and then set whatever register I like. The jog wheel can be used for lots of other functions too, with its edit functions changing in certain pad modes. Then switching it to channel browses the grid, which is useful for selecting certain tracks or clips. Its browse function moves the position marker around in your arrangement, so you can scroll in either direction along the timeline. And also, if you hold down the restart button in the transport section, the jog wheel can be used to change the loop position and length. In volume mode, the wheel controls the master volume level. Whilst holding down browse, adjust the cue level. For an instant adjustment though, you've always got the knob just below the meter above, which is constantly assigned to the master fader. In swing mode, the jog wheel changes the record quantization, which you can see changing at the bottom of the live window, as when most settings are changed. And pressing whilst rotating changes the clip quantization. And in tune mode, it has control of the tempo, with push and shift actions adjusting it more finely. Let's go back up to the pages section for a minute, so you can see some of the other options there. After the four pages of mixer controls, there are a further six pages for carrying out other tasks. For instance, page five is device mode, which gives you buttons for selecting the track you want to tweak, then the device on that track, after which the selected device can be controlled using the encoders. The pages after that are a note repeat page, two really useful settings pages, a DJing page with crossfader, cue level, nudging and so on, and then a MIDI CC page for assigning yourself. All of the buttons down the left side have dedicated functions, with some handy parameters like the song follow switch, arrangement overdub and back to arrangement, clip and device chain view toggling, re-enable automation, stop all clips, and the transport section is of course mapped to all of the transport functions as you'd expect. And you can also carry out editing with Studio, with the buttons above the jog wheel having various actions for creating and editing tracks and clips. The lower row, for example, behave as you'd expect, allowing you to undo, redo, quantize and clear. But the upper row have been assigned to functions like creating new clips and various other edit commands. Let's put a few of those parameters to use now, to show you an example of how useful they can be. So let's suppose I want to create a new MIDI clip for the synth on track 5. Then what I'll do is navigate to the area on the grid where I want the clip to be. Then set the clip length. I'll go for two bars. Then holding down paste, which is the new key, I can create a two bar clip in that slot by hitting the pad. Then I'll just record on that track. Turn on the metronome and session view recording. Launch the scene and play something in. So I can now edit that by maybe quantizing it 
and now I can duplicate the clip so it's playing over the main groove in the next scene. Get on up. And now I'll duplicate the scene as well so I can create a variation. First up, I'll clear the percussion and also the drums. Actually, I'll keep the drums, so I'll undo that. But I'll edit the clip so it's just the first beat looping. And maybe I'll add some filter automation to the bass. So I'll select the filter in device mode, then turn on automation recording for session view with the events button, and record in some filter tweaking. Now I'll edit the synth part, making the loop smaller too. And that gives us a nice little variation to the main groove. Now let's move on to track six, which has a drum rack on it. So I'll record arm that now, but it's now record armed tracks five and six. So I'll go on to page eight and then turn on exclusive arming. You also have an exclusive soloing option there, as well as a button for automatically arming tracks when you select them. So now I'll create a clip on that track too, but bring it down to a one bar loop. Now in pad mode, I can play the drums in the rack. And a cool feature in this mode is when the edit button is selected, the jog wheel scrolls up and down the rack. So now I'll do the same as before and turn on session view recording, launch the clip and then play something in but this time I'll set record quantizing to 16th, so it'll be in time. Or I could use note repeat, which has its own dedicated page, which allows you to set up multiple note repeat timings for creating drum rolls of different speeds. Or you can use the buttons either side of the meter to change the speed. What I might do is double the clip now, and then create a roll of 16th notes, which goes up and down in level as I change the pressure whilst holding down the pad to adjust the velocities of notes. A drum part with more natural timing can be created by turning record quantizing off, and then holding Browse and Quantize to quantize by 50%, just like on Machina. So you can see how comprehensive the template is for controlling all sorts of areas of live. And of course, when you want to switch back to controlling Machina, you just bring it out of MIDI mode, and it becomes an instrument in its own right once again. See you next time.